Welcome to Francis Read the Bible. Today I'm moving on to Genesis 29. And okay, please subscribe, follow so you get updates and algorithms make more people see this. Thank you. In Genesis 29, Jacob continued on his way and went toward the land of the east. Suddenly he came upon a well out in the fields with three flocks of sheep lying around it. The flocks were watered from this well, which had a large stone over the opening. Whenever all the flocks came together, the shepherds rolled the stone back and watered them. Then they would put the stone back in place. So this is where Jacob found himself. He found a group of shepherds. So he's about to ask them questions. So he asked the shepherds, my friends, where are you from? And they answered him from Haran. And then he asked, do you know Laban, grandson of Nahor? Remember Nahor is Abraham's brother. Mm -hmm. And they told him, yes, we do. Is he well? He is well, they answered. Look, here comes his daughter Rachel with his flock. And you know, so now he sees his cousin coming. And I'm sure Jacob was relieved, you know, being in the right place and uh, seeing my uncle's family member is coming already. So, yeah, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm home. He had to ask them about their watering method, you know. Mm -hmm. So, while Jacob was still talking with them, Rachel arrived with the flock. When Jacob saw Rachel with his uncle Laban's flock, he went to the well rolled the stone back and watered the sheep. Then he kissed her and began to cry for joy. Well, not today's kiss. If you're someone from the Mediterranean or from Arab countries, you know what the kiss means. Like he kissed her on the cheek. You know how they hug them. Yeah, cheek kissing. Not kiss on the lips. So he kissed her and began to cry for joy. And he told her, I'm your father's relative, the son of Rebecca. And she, of course, she knows Rebecca. Rebecca is her aunt. So she runs. Daddy, your nephew Jacob is here, you know. And then Laban ran to meet his nephew, hugged him, kissed him, and brought him into the house. When Jacob told Laban everything that had happened, Laban said, Yes, indeed, you are my own flesh and blood. Of course, he is your own flesh and blood. Laban is no different. You know, Laban is a liar. He's a trickster. He's very greedy. So hearing that Jacob tricked his brother from his birthright, took the birthright, also tricked, lied and tricked him out of his blessings, all that he did. Of course, in my flesh and blood, a sharp guy, as some Nigerians will say. That's what Laban was. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. This is how Rebecca is. This is how her brother Laban is. And there's no surprises how Jacob was, you know. And so Laban hearing all that, like, yeah, of course, you're my flesh and blood. You indeed you are. No doubt about it. If you ask me, Laban is the weapon that was fashioned against Jacob, like his karma. Laban was Jacob's karma. And imagine your own karma being your uncle. Like I said, this family dysfunctional. See what Rebecca did to her son Esau. See what Jacob did to his brother Esau. And what Laban is about to do to his nephew, Jacob. Very dysfunctional family. In my part of Igbo land or Igbo culture generally, if... They go to ask about a family when people are about to get married. And if you say, oh, the father killed this person. This person did this person. They're like, oh, no, this person too will kill. Or this person is a liar. Or this is how the family people are. They will just conclude, you two, you're going to be like that. And see it now. Jacob ha had the same traits with his uncle, Laban. So Laban said to Jacob, oh, it shouldn't work for me for nothing, you know, just because you're my relative. How much do you want? Jacob wasn't so wise, you know, it's, un it's understandable. He could have just told his uncle, pay me so amount, and then later married his cousin without any stress. It wasn't Laban that told him, oh, work for me for seven years until I give you my daughter, um, Rachel. No, 
he said that with his own mouth. So Sistine says Laban had two daughters. The older was named Leah and the younger Rachel. Leah had lovely eyes, but Rachel was shapely and beautiful. You know, Jacob was in love with Rachel, so he said, I will work seven years for you if you will let me marry Rachel. Nobody asked him. So what I've learned from this is you need to be careful. The promises you make, maybe out of out of excitement, love, you know, agreement, covenants, and things you enter into. Nobody, you should need, you need to be wise in situations. Nobody asked. His uncle just told him, how much do you want me to pay you? He could just say, let me marry your daughter, Rachel. I'll work for you for a year or for six months. But he, he was one who opened his mouth and said, seven years. You could have just let his uncle pay him and, and still marry his cousin without working for seven years to marry Rachel. But he was the one who said, let me work for you for seven years if you let me marry Rachel. One needs to be careful the kind of pronouncements, um, promises, and things they say. Wisdom is very important, you know. That's what I'm learning from this chapter. Then Laban answered, I'd rather give her to you than to anyone else. He could have given her to him for free without, without making him work for seven years. I know, I'd rather give her to you than to anyone else. Stay here with me. Then Jacob walked seven years so that he could have Rachel, and the time seemed like only a few days to him because he loved her. You see, love is good, love is great, but one needs to be careful. Promises they make in states of heightened emotions, excitement, when you're angry, when you're in love, when you're sad, when you're happy. Very important. I think Jacob didn't handle this situation here with wisdom. and He came back to bite him in the ass. Then Jacob said to Laban, the time is up, let me marry your daughter. So Laban gave a wedding feast and invited everyone. But that night, instead of Rachel, he took Leah to Jacob and Jacob had intercourse with her. And I guess you're wondering, why didn't Jacob notice until, as 25 says, not until the next morning did Jacob discover what it was, that it was Leah they went to Laban and said, why did you do this to me? I worked to get Rachel. Why have, you keep, why have you tricked me? Like I said, it's in their bloodline, you know. That's how Laban is. That's how Rebecca is. That's how Jacob is. They're tricksters, you know. And no surprises, uncle did the same thing to him. It's just something they love to do. It's like reflex. So his uncle cheated him the same way he cheated his brother, Esau. You know, and why? That another thing I'm learning from, another thing I've always learned from these um, verses, uh, or er, or is, you need to be careful the way you drink. I've never been drunk. You know, people. I don't know why people let alcohol, you know, take over them rob them of their self-control and senses that's exactly what happened to jacob between 23 to 25 if jacob were was in his right senses like if he wasn't drunk he was drunk you know he drank to excess to stupor and then he went in and he had sex if jacob were in his right mind you know even if the room was pitch dark or pitch black he would have spoken to the person in his bed. He would have heard the voice. Even if their voices were the same, he would have, by touching her body alone, he would have known, ah, this is not Rachel Lou. Please, who is this? You get. But he was drunk. He was drunk to stupor. I know it wasn't mentioned there, but it was obvious. He was drunk. He had gone and imbibed on the wedding day, drank, drank, drank. And just went in there and just left and he didn't even realize until until morning it wasn't love that made him not realize how will you just go lay down or something he <laughs> had sex no speaking to her nothing he was drunk to stupor you know he wasn't in, in his right state of mind his senses had left him which was why he only realized it in the morning not that the place was dark even if the place even in my right senses if i meet someone or <laughs> one of my 
family members and maybe when they take in nigeria they take the lights you ask who is this even by touching their features touching a person's face or the height or whatnot you will know who the person is jacob was drunk that's the problem with drinking you know people drink and they make so many erroneous decisions so many mistakes they either drive and kill people they either sleep they commit adultery in that state or you know they get gang raped because they were drunk or you know they, they couldn't control themselves you know they had they couldn't walk away run away they were in the wrong place because they were drunk so you see drinking is not a good thing this is a perfect ex example here in the bible you know your body is a temple of the holy spirit so alcohol should not be in control of you drugs should not be in control of you you should be in your right senses if you're ever going to lose whatever let the holy spirit be and as in fuel you up not alcohol so in 26 laban answered oh it is not the custom here to give the youngest daughter your younger daughter in marriage for the older like i said laban is a trickster this guy worked for seven years for this girl he could have told um his nephew jacob when jacob said let me work seven years for rachel he could have told him then before he started working for those seven years oh you can't marry rachel her her, her elder sister or older sister has to get married first but he didn't say a word you know he waited dude worked for seven years and then on the wedding day to nine's day gave him so much alcohol he was drunk and all that and voila it was leah not rachel if jacob was had not imbibed so much in alcohol he would never have been tricked you know and he now tells him oh wait until the week's marriage celebrations are over and i will give you rachel if you work for me for another seven years can you imagine after tricking oh lord after tricking him giving him the wrong wife you now ask him to work for another you see how greedy how evil how wicked the line that's how it's a blood thing it's in their bloodline i keep saying it <laughs> that's how they are it's what an uncle is doing to his nephew very dysfunctional family to your own nephew not even okay i'm sorry for what i did you know what just walk one extra year then i'll your own nephew no love no like i said dysfunctional family it's in their bloodline and i think sometimes some of in my place we believe some of these things pass through blood that's why even in english terms some an idiom says the apple doesn't fall far from the tree you know or we also say like father like son like mother like daughter you know things like that even leah who was rachel's elder sister the older sister see what she did to her sister you, everybody knew this guy was in love with your sister rachel and he worked for seven years for her and you went along with the whole plan with your father and he went and laid in his bed and he slept with you until the next morning of course the guy is not going to love you he's going to resent you. he's going to hate you no there's no <laughs> there's no whatever to it you know he's just going to manage you as his wife he's never going to love you because he never loved you you can't force someone to marry you uh, to love you even if you marry them even if you trick them into marrying you just imagine that and jacob agreed and the week of marriage celebrations were over was over then laban gave him rachel then he worked for another seven years for laban then when the lord saw that leah was loved less than rachel of course what did leah expect or lee what did she expect of course he's never going to love you he never loved you he worked for a whole seven years for your younger sister and you let yourself go lay down there thinking oh once i marry him he's going to love me it doesn't work that way just like some people think trapping a man with um pregnancy is going to make him love you it doesn't work that way you know and i've said it before that i believe there's a curse on this family it was hard for 
Abraham's wife to conceive. You know, the wife he loved, Sarah. It was also hard for um, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, that he loved to conceive. It was also hard for Leah and and Rachel to conceive, but God, but God had pity on Leah, you know, because she was loved less, and then she gave birth to a son, and she named him Lord as in my trouble, Reuben. Then she became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. The Lord has also given me this son because he has heard that I was not loved, and. She named him Simeon. Simeon means hear or heard. Then she got pregnant again and said, Now my husband will be bound more tightly to me because I have borne him three sons. So she named him Levi. Levi means bound. Then she got pregnant again, you know. This time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Judah means praise. But still, even with all the sons she gave Jacob, the love did not grow. Even though Rachel had no child yet, the love did not grow. That's one thing I've learned from these few verses in this chapter. No matter if a man does not love you, if a woman does not love you, giving them whatever will not make that love grow. Getting married to them will not make them love you. Having a child, if you like, give them a football team it will make them love you nothing once that love is not there i don't know how people keep saying love will grow love will grow see Leah, the love did not grow it doesn't work that way what's not yours is not yours unfortunately well god still used her to give to keep the covenant with abraham you know and give jacob the children he promised he was going to give jacob still the love didn't grow on the part of jacob so don't do that to yourself if that man that woman doesn't love you that's what i'm learning don't do it don't get married to them don't don't have sex with them it will not make anything happen if you like give them 10 million dollars a billion dollars like give them your life your kidney everything they will not love you if it's the if they don't so um i'll see you tomorrow god bless you and goodbye